today we did the Kiros blanket exercise for the first time and uh, felt that went extremely well. The feedback that we got from uh, certainly the, the talking circle and from everybody after, they, they felt that it really uh, kind of opened up their eyes, I guess, and, and just of what actually the true history is with regards to Aboriginal uh, peoples in Canada. Two separate nations. Treaties are basically nation to nation. That's the word assimilation. Wouldn't it be like, be like making one group forced into like another way of living? You represent the indigenous people and the people who have been here for at least 10,000 years. Long before the arrival of Europeans, Turtle Island was your home and home to millions of people like you. You lived in hundreds of nations, you fished and hunted and farmed. Each community had its own language, culture, traditions, laws, and governments. The land is very important to you. All of your needs, food, clothing, shelter, culture, and your spirituality are taken care of by the land, which is represented here by these blankets. According to the doctrine of discovery, nations that are not Christian cannot own land. The indigenous peoples living on this land will be put under the power of Christian nations that discover their land. When Europeans first arrived on Turtle Island, there were many more indigenous people than Europeans. The newcomers depended on you for their survival, and you helped them to understand how you did things. In the beginning, there, were lots of co there was lots of cooperation and support between you and the settlers. The settlers and their leaders recognized you, the first peoples, as having your own governments, laws, and territories. In the Royal Proclamation of 1763, King George III said the indigenous nations own their lands. The king said that the only legal way newcomers could gain control of those lands was by making treaties between the two nations. Later on, the government of Canada was formed, and the Royal Proclamation became part of Canada law. For you, the indigenous peoples, the treaties were very special and sacred agreements. They were statements of peace, friendship, and sharing, and they were based on respect and honesty. When this happened, it meant you lost your rights and control over your lands. The law gave control of your lands to the government of Canada, which at the time was only made up of people from Europe. From 1820 until the 1970s, the federal government took First Nations, Inuit, and Métis children from your homes and communi communities and put them in boarding schools that were run by churches. Your parents didn't have a choice of, of this, and neither did you. All people with yellow cards, raise your hands. You must not move to a separate, empty blanket. You represent those who were taken out of your communities and placed in residential schools far from your homes. While some students say they had positive experience at schools, most of you say that you, were, you suffered from very bad conditions and from different kinds of abuse. Many of you lost family connections and didn't learn your language, culture, and traditions. Some students died at schools. Many of you never returned home or were treated badly when you did. As she walked back here, I want everybody to turn their backs to her. It kind of represents kind of what happened and how when they went the rest of school or, or didn't return. Okay. Please be silent for another moment to honor those who died or were shunned because of residential schools. So I want you to kind of just kind of think back to when we started and how much um, land was here when you looked at blankets in North America. Just kind of remember what was there and now uh, what it looks like now. I learned a lot more about how like the way the Aboriginals were treated and how bad they were treated and how the Europeans took their land and kicked them out and gave them diseases. And that was a better way to learn. Like, yeah, it just makes me want to just spread all that information like across Canada. Just let people know how badly we've been treated back in the early days. So, yeah. I want them to know that it, reading a textbook and actually looking at it and seeing it are two whole different things. Like, I had no idea that they had all this whole bunch of land and then it slowly dwindled down into barely anything. It's just amazing to watch it go. bit huge and then down to nothing. When I went to school after back at home there. We didn't actually learn any of these things here. Like we didn't know the Indian Act, we weren't talking about BNA Act until I actually went to university. That's where everything started coming in. Right? 
all the information, and then this program here just kind of put it all together. And it's really awesome. All school children need to learn and utilize this exercise as part of their learning about Aboriginal history. Thank you for sending kids to us to, to share with, and it was an awesome day. They got a lot out of it.